I used my Smart to Move Force Plates to help one of my best players gain six miles an hour in one session. It was really easy, we did it in an hour. Let's go see how I did it. So a little bit of context here for Deb in this video. So I was working with one of my Division I female golfers and she came in just looking to kind of gather some data and see where we're at and some key points. She's always been in that mid to high 90s club head speed and she noticed that she had a little bit of drop in her speed. And we quickly found out what the force plates and we'll dive into this video. So much of it had to do with the timing of her vertical forces and that's why with a little bit of gathering data on the smart to move force plates, and a couple of drills, we very quickly recaptured the speed, which is why we had such an incredible jump in an hour. So the first video we're gonna jump into here is gonna be uh, an overview of her baseline data, and then the drills, and then the after. Enjoy the video. So here's the before swing that we had with Haley. And let's remember, Haley's a very good technical golf swing, exceptional player. And what we see here is that as she makes her downswing, we're gonna see this yellow line peak. Her verticals are going to peak, and we're content with the amount of force she's producing. Obviously there's a little bit of room to improve, but what we see is her verticals are peaking actually past impact. The swing was 93 miles an hour. Let's dive into the drills that we went through and then what we'll do at the end is we'll come back and look at our results afterwards. As we can see from what we saw in her profile is what we were noticing is her verticals were peaking way too late in the downswing. And if our verticals are peaking too late from the ground, it's never gonna make it to the club in time. So as I went through and I showed this player what we had seen, the first thing I wanna do was just make sure that we had a clear understanding of where we want those verticals to peak. And for so many players, the gold standard we're hoping to find is that in the downswing that those verticals are starting to peak from the ground when that left arm or our lead arm is parallel with the ground. Somewhere between lead arm parallel and somewhere between club parallel, somewhere in between those two positions. But I'm always trying to educate a player to do it early, as early as possible because for so many of them, they have to feel like they're doing it the moment that they start their downswing if we want to start improving the timing of when those verticals peak. So enough about the data, let's actually start talking about the drills that we went through to help her improve. Hey, here's a little secret. Every week I send an email on Thursday mornings that gives you three things. It gives you one golf tip, it gives you one quote or stat and gives you one little extra to help you play better golf and practice more effectively. To sign up, there's a link in my description. Make sure you get signed up because on Thursday morning, the next one's coming. The first training aid that I used was actually a force pedal. This is the large orange force pedal. And what I had her do is I had her set up to the golf ball with this under the ball of her lead foot. We started getting an understanding of when we want to apply that force, but it was also very important to identify where we apply that force. So what I had this player do was we would set up and the first thing that we did is we would just take it to the back, top of the back swing and then just start to apply a force and really pressing down as if we were trying to squish that force pedal. The nice part about the force pedal is it gives us some feedback as well. So then what we were able to do is we were able to progress to where we would go to the top of the back swing and we'd really get that press. And then we actually started making golf swings where the cue was to her as she got to the top of the backswing, I wanted her to feel like she was applying maximum force down into this force pedal on her lead side. So she was really getting that feeling where as she was finishing her backswing, that's when she was really starting to get that press in her golf swing. So it looked a little something like this. And we went through this a series of times and I was always cueing the feedback that I wanted her to feel like she was pushing in that pedal earlier and maximizing how hard we were pushing down into that pedal. The next drill that we use is called the step drill. And what we did was we started with our feet together in that club out in front of us. And what we did is as soon as the club passed her feet, she made her step. And the goal of this is we're trying to initiate that shift in pressure a lot earlier in the golf swing. And now she was armed with the information of when we wanted that vertical to peak and where we wanted to apply it in that foot. So now we were able to set up here and just make some dry swings, making a step and making a swing. And again, the cue for her was as soon as that club passed her lead foot, she made her step. She was applying maximum force in the ball of her foot before she got to the top of her back swing and then applying that force or letting that force work through the downswing. 
and that was the cue that we ran her through. Let's go take a look at what the difference was after these instructions. So let's take a look post. So we made our drills, we went through our changes, and now what we're gonna see in this golf swing, we're still gonna generate a similar amount of force, but what we're going to see is that this force peaks way earlier in the downswing. Right now, if we look, left arm is approximately parallel here, and as we come through, now what we see is as we get to impact, right, we're obviously well past our peak, and we're now unleashing a lot of speed from the ground through the body, through the hands, and down to the club. And this swing here, was 98 miles an hour. The after results were pretty impressive and I have to be honest, I was even surprised. This is a high level division one player, but it goes to show a beautiful looking technical golf swing, but without being able, without being able to know exactly where they're applying their force, there's the potential that there's always something left in the tank. With my smart to move force plates, I was able to very quickly identify that this player was peaking way too late and we work our way through a couple of feedback drills and then we're able to retest quickly in the same session. And as we continue to get an understanding of how to apply force, when to apply it and where, we continue to see that player speeds go up and up and up where we finish with a six mile an hour gain in one session. A huge jump. I hope you enjoyed this little case study. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments down below and make sure you subscribe to this channel for more case studies just like this one.